Welcome to Story Station, Season 2, Episode 4. In this episode, you can listen to two Native American stories. The first story is titled, The Guest. This short story is about a smart and witty man finally getting revenge on the evil witch. The second story is titled, The Flight to the Moon. A conjurer tells an incredible tale of going to the moon, and he finds out it is definitely not what he expected. Hope you enjoy it! I will read a story called, The Guest. An old hag lived in a house with her grandson. She was a very bad woman who thought of nothing but playing mischief. She was a witch and tried to harm everybody with witchcraft. One time, a stranger came to visit some friends who lived in a house near the old woman. The visitor was a fine hunter and went out with his host every morning and they brought home a great deal of game. It made the old woman envious to see her neighbor have so much to eat when she had little, and she was determined to kill the visitor. She made a soup of wolf and man's brains, <laughs> which was the most poisonous food she could think of. Then she sent her grandson an invite to invite the stranger to eat supper at her house. Tell him that I desire to be polite to the guest of my neighbor, but be sure you do not tell him what I have cooked. The boy went to the neighbor's hut and said, Stranger, my grandmother invites you to come to her hut and have a good feast on supper that she has cooked. She told me not to say that it's a wolf in man's brains, and I didn't say it. The man thought a moment and then replied, Tell your grandmother that I will come. He went to the hut where the old woman pretended to be very glad to see him. They sat down at the table, and while she was placing a large dish of soup before him, he put a bowl on the floor between his feet. He excused himself for putting his hand before his mouth because his front teeth were gone, and every time he poured the spoonful into the bowl. When he had finished, he said, It is the custom in my tribe to bring your hostess a bit of some delicious food to show her that you appreciate her hospitality. Here is a bowl of rare food which I give to you, but it will not be good unless you eat it at once. He gave the soup to the old witch, and the moment she tasted the broth she herself had prepared, she fell down dead. The end. I hope you like this story. The next story begins in a moment. I will read a story called The Flight to the Moon. A powerful conjurer who had a bear for his mascot thought he would like to go to the moon. He had his hands tied up with a rope fastened around his knees and his neck. Then he sat down at the rear of his hut with his back to the lamps and had the light extinguished. He called for his mascot and the bear at once appeared and he mounted its back. Up it carried him, above the village, above the mountains, up and up till they reached the moon. To his surprise, the moon was a house which was covered with beautiful white deer skins. Now white deer are strange and sacred and are hatched from long white eggs buried deep in the soil. There is mystery and magic in the white deer, white buffalo, and in all albino animals. The man in the moon dried these white deer skins and fastened them over his house, which, as I said, is the moon itself. On each side of the door to the house, was the upper part of an enormous walrus. The beasts were alive, and they threatened to tear the visitor in pieces. It was very dangerous to try to pass the fierce animals, 
But the conjurer told his mascot to growl as loud as it could, and that startled, startled the walruses for an instant. And in that instant, the man slipped in. It must be chilly in the moon, for the house had a passageway to keep out the cold, just as the Eskimo houses have. In this passageway was a red and white spotted dog, the only dog which the man in the moon keeps. The man went on, past this dog, and entered the inner room. There, at the left, he saw a door into another building, in which sat a beautiful woman with a lamp before her. As soon as she saw the stranger, she blew on her fire and made it flash up. She hid behind the blaze, but he had seen enough so that he knew she was the sun. The man in the moon rose from his seat on the ledge and came over to shake hands with the visitor and wel welcome him. Behind the lamps, there was a great heap of venison and seal meat, but the man in the moon did not offer his guest any of it, which is not the way the Eskimo and the Indians treat their guests. The man in the moon seemed to have a different idea of hospitality, for he immediately said, my wife, Ulu, will soon be here, and we will have a dance. Mind you, don't laugh, or she will slice you in two with her knife and feed you to my ermine, which is in yon little house outside. Before long, a woman entered, carrying an oblong chopping bowl, in which she lay her chopping knife. She set it down, and stooped forward, turning the bowl, as if it were a whirligig. Then she commenced dancing, but when she turned her back toward the stranger, he saw that she was hollow. She had no back, backbone, or insides, but only lungs and a heart. Her husband presently joined the dance. Their attitudes and grimaces were so ludicrous that the stranger could scarcely keep from laughing did not wish to be impolite, so he kept turning his face aside and pretending to cough. Fortunately for him, just as he thought he would surely explode with laughter, he recalled the warning the man had given him and rushed out of the house. The man guessed what was the matter with him and called out, You better call your white bear mascot. He did so and escaped unhurt. However, he went into the house another day and succeeded in keeping his face straight. So when their performance was ended, the man in the moon was very friendly to him and showed him all around the house and let him look into a small building near the entrance. In this building, there were large herds of deer which seemed to be roaming over vast plains. The man in the moon said, you may choose one of these for your own. And as soon as he did, the animal fell through a hole and alighted on the earth right by the conjurer's hut. In another building, there were many seals swimming in an ocean, and he was allowed to choose one of these, which also fell down to his hut. Now you have seen all that I can show you, and you may go home, said the moon man. So the conjurer called his mascot and rode down through the air to his hut. There, his body lay motionless while his spirit was away, but now it was revived. The cords with which his hands and knees had been bound dropped off, though they had been tied in very hard knots. The conjurer quite felt quite exhausted from this trip, but when the lamps were lighted, he told his eager neighbors all that he had seen during his flight to the moon. The end. I hope you enjoyed this story. Thank you for listening to Story Station. We are adding stories as frequently as possible, so check back often. We would love to hear your feedback and any questions you may have. Thank you.